Hey everybody and welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. In this video I'm just going to give you a few quick tips on how to get the best out of Dash Studio with the least amount of stress. Before we get started, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and subscribers. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen. And of course, thank you to everyone else for subscribing and hitting the notification icon. Every little helps and I'm incredibly grateful to everyone for whatever support they give. So let's jump right into this then. My first tip is going to be a pretty basic one, and that is always use a camera. Now, perspective view is really cool in the sense that you can rotate it around, you can move around in the W, A, S, and D thing. But um, <laughs> once you've moved, the only place you can go with any real ease is back to the beginning, which can be a bit of a pain if you're dealing with a huge scene, like you're dealing with like a city block or something like that, or like a resort. Getting around can be a real pain. So what you can do, click on the camera icon in the top left hand side of the corner, Give it a name and we're just going to call this one default view. Is that too small? There's an eye in there somewhere. Right, there we go. Default view. And we will put that in the label as well. And we're just going to apply the default settings and we're going to say accept. Right, now, what this does is it creates this camera in the scene tab. You can go straight to it by hitting the default view tab there. And it works exactly the same as the perspective view does, as do all cameras. But the beauty of this one is, if you end up miles away from where you want to be, you can simply put in the values that you want to go to. So let's say 100, 100, and then let's say like 10,000 or 1,000. You can actually input the values that you want to travel to in the properties, in the parameters tab, and you're golden. And then obviously you just don't have to use this one for rendering. You can create other cameras for that. And just remember to come in and out of the camera when you want to do certain things. But that's tip number one. Tip number two is simple, really. It's about when you create your characters, save them in a separate folder in your content library, which I will demonstrate here. So we're in my content library, in my DAS studio presets, in my library, and then I've got folders beginning with AA, which, re which refer to different projects that I'm working on, and that's where I save my characters. And then inside those folders, I will have scenes or I will have um, outfits. So what I generally have is I'll have the base character in the characters tab, and then I'll have the outfits and the base things like the hair, the eyelashes and such saved as separate files in the outfits folder. And what this enables you to do is very quickly find your characters and put them into your scenes rather than having them having everything you ever work on saved in one folder. It's generally a good idea to keep your library as organized as possible because as I say, as you get on and you use DAS more and more often and you start filling your library with folders of different assets, it can be really, really difficult to find everything that you're looking for. The next tip is to always load your environment first or build your environment first. I know how tempting it is to put your characters in the scene and get them all posed because you're very excited about what they're doing but then you load your scene in your environment and then you realize that your characters are nowhere even close to the place where they're supposed to be and it's a lot easier to move a single character or two characters than it is to move every single item within a scene and that just makes life a lot more difficult for everybody involved the next tip is regarding performance and i know that there's a lot of people out there who are working with more strict hardware limitations and i do get asked this question quite often so i'm going to talk about it now in the render settings in the advanced tab there is a property called texture compression and what this property does is it allows you to tell Dash Studio, how big a file has to be before it becomes compressed. Because texture compression does take up a little bit of time, 
but it generally makes your renders run a lot quicker because you're working with smaller textures. However, it can impact the quality of the textures. So generally speaking, you don't want these numbers to be too small. Having said that, if you're working with a really small graphics card or you're trying to work on a really low end machine, then having these numbers set low can be a bit of a godsend. Now it's worth mentioning that this only really has any effect if you're working with GPU rendering. If you're trying to render in CPU or if you don't have a GPU that's up to scratch, um, this really isn't going to do you anything at all but generally speaking i would have these at double what they are but i've got them set lower at the moment because Dash studio the latest version is a bit sketchy on using iray but um yeah you'll want these set to somewhere in the region of whatever your graphics card is capable of 4000 for the medium threshold and 8000 for the high threshold is yeah, it's, it's, it's manageable. And as I say, this is really down to whether or not your graphics card can cope with the extra memory of having larger files sent to it. And it does make a slight difference in image quality. So that's all the tips I've got for you today. I hope you found those useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.